XLOOKUP has been around for quite some time now, but is it always going to be the best function to use in every case? In this video, we're gonna take a look at three situations where VLOOKUP is actually gonna be the preferred option. Let's take a look. The first situation we're gonna take a look at is when you're using the trim range function or the equivalent dot operators. So Excel recently introduced these and they allow you to return only the used part of a range reference. So first, let's take a look at the trim range function. So here, this is going to allow us to reference an entire column. And then we have the options to return various parts of that entire column. So we can return everything. Or we can trim off all the leading empty rows or trim off all the trailing empty rows or both. Let's just check out leading. And you can see the first couple unused rows here don't get returned, but everything after is returned. Let's try the next option. So here we've got everything before, but then the trailing empty rows are not returned. And in this case, we would want to use this option here to trim both leading and trailing empty rows. And that's just going to give us those values here in our column. Let's just delete that. We've also got the dot operator, which does the equivalent thing that our function trim range does. So here we can reference the entire column. And if we place a dot before or after our colon, then that's going to allow us to trim the leading and trailing empty rows. Now we could do the same thing to reference both the ID and product data here. So we, we could reference column C to D and then trim any leading and trailing spaces there. And now we've got two versions of our used range. So we've got separate ID and product columns, which have been trimmed. And we've got the combined ID and product columns, which have also been trimmed. Now, if for some reason we're not able to put our data inside an Excel table, but we still want our lookups to be dynamic so that when we add new data, those lookups reference the correct ranges, then we can use trim range, but VLOOKUP is gonna be the better option here because we only need to trim a single range. So let's take a look at this. So for example, if we wanna look up a particular product ID with VLOOKUP, then we're gonna look for that product ID and the array that we're gonna look in in this case is gonna be our trimmed range. And you can see that creates a single array reference. And in this case, we're looking in the first column and returning the second column. So here our column index will be two and we want an exact match. And that gets our product number seven, which is headphones. And we can do a similar thing with XLOOKUP and here, let's look for our ID. And in this case, XLOOKUP requires a separate lookup array and a separate return array. So in this case, we would need to use two separate trim ranges. And we can press enter and we also get headphones in this case. But now let's take a look at what happens if we add a new ID into our data set so here, let's add ID 11, but in this case, we're not going to add a product. So this one would just be empty maybe. And if we reference these ranges separately, what's gonna happen is this range here is gonna grow by one cell, but this range here is not. And XLOOKUP requires a lookup array and a return array that are the same length. Now VLOOKUP just has the one range reference. And because of that, when we add a new ID, 
that range reference is going to grow and include the unused cell here. And so our VLOOKUP still returns headphones in this case, whereas our XLOOKUP formula now returns a value error because we've got an array size mismatch. So in the case where you can't use an Excel table to create dynamic formulas, and instead you need to use the trim range or dot operator, then VLOOKUP is gonna be the better option because you're only gonna to need to use a single range reference for VLOOKUP. The next scenario we're gonna take a look at is when you're looking up inside a spilled array. So here we've got a table of data, and then based on that, we've got this group by function, which is grouping our customers and then telling us which products they have. So this group by function creates a summary of each customer and then a comma separated list of the products that they've purchased. And then based on this, what we're gonna do is look up a particular customer. So here, let's use the VLOOKUP first. So here, we're gonna look for our customer and we're gonna look in this array here. And you can see that creates a single spilled array reference. And we're gonna look in our column of customers and return the second column here of products. So we need a column index of two. And then we're gonna return our exact match with VLOOKUP. And when we press enter here, you can see we've got desks and smartwatch. And so that's what our customer here has in this group by function. Let's do the same thing with XLOOKUP. So we're gonna look for our customer. And here we're gonna look in this array of customers and then return this product value here. And when we press enter, we get the same values as expected. But let's take a look at what happens if we add new data so that the shape of our array here changes. So let's add in this new data into our table and you can see that our group by function grows and changes shape. And our VLOOKUP is still referencing the correct range here, you can see. But our XLOOKUP function now returns an NA error because it's still only referencing those ranges that we selected. So if we wanna use XLOOKUP with this, then we need to adjust our formula. So instead of referencing this hard-coded range, we would need to use something like choose columns and reference the entire array. And in this case, we're gonna select the first column. And then for our return array reference, we can use choose columns again on our spilled array and return the second column and press enter. And now we've got an X lookup that won't break based on our dynamic array. But as you can see, V lookup is gonna be easier to write because with X lookup, we need to adjust our formula to reference the array by using choose columns. The last scenario we're gonna take a look at where VLOOKUP is gonna be a better option is when you wanna return multiple non-adjacent columns. So both VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP can return multiple values in different columns. Let's take a look first at XLOOKUP. So here we're gonna look for our order ID number seven, and we're gonna look in our order ID column. And in this case, what we wanna return is multiple values. So instead of a single column, we're gonna select all of our columns and press enter. And you can see that XLOOKUP returns those values. Let's do the same with VLOOKUP. So here we're gonna look for our ID in our entire table. And in this case, instead of a single index, what we wanna pass VLOOKUP is an array of index values. And to do that, we can use curly braces with a list of values. 
So here we want to return column two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to do an exact match. And when we press enter, we get the exact same data as our X lookup returns. But now suppose that we don't want to return all of this data. Maybe we only want to return the date, the product, and the amount. Let's see how we can adjust VLOOKUP to do that. So in this case, we would just not reference the customer column, which is column three, and press enter. And there we go, we've got just our date, product, and price. Now let's see how we could do something similar with XLOOKUP. So in this case, we're gonna need to adjust our formula again with the choose columns function in order to return only the columns we want. So here we're gonna use choose columns with this range here. And in this case, we wanna return column one. We don't wanna return column two. We wanna return column three and column four from that range. So we're gonna list column one, three, and four. And when we press enter, we get the same result with XLOOKUP. So in this case, VLOOKUP is gonna be a simpler option to return multiple non-adjacent columns. As with XLOOKUP, you're gonna to need to adjust your return range with the choose columns function. So there you go. Those are three situations that I think VLOOKUP is gonna be a better or easier option for returning values instead of XLOOKUP. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next video.